Welcome to worship, to those of us gathered here at Deception Bay Uniting Church, to those of you who are watching online later this afternoon or during the week, but we'd like to um, offer a special blessing on Joe and Lozana's family in Fiji who have been watching as well. So let's listen to a few notices. As you know, we... We tried having the notices at the end, but after a little period of review, it was elected to put them back at the beginning of the service again. So our notices for today. First of all, I think you get. First of all, I think you gathered if you've got a newsletter online. Judy and Pauline are away, and so we really do ask God's blessing on them as they travel. And uh, yeah, Pauline's so thankful that her heart condition wasn't what they were expecting it to be. So they've been set free for a couple of weeks. So think of them as on their travels. They're going to be spending a week at Krakenback, but they have taken you know, some fleecy stuff to get them through. Friday afternoon, we had a wonderful time at Helping Hands. I know most of you don't sew, but you need to know some of these exciting things. Hazel's daughter, Roslyn, came, and she's a repurposer. So we'd always said that Helping Hands, we were recyclers, but she said, no, you're repurposing fabric that people have given you. She had the most amazing things here to, um, on Friday. We all loved it and we think in January we'll run a workshop where our ladies can have a chance to maybe do something. But Hazel just mentioned to me a moment ago that um, normally Roslyn really loves cathedrals, but she came into this church and said it was far better than any cathedral she'd been in. So thank you, Rosalind, for that. We have church council meeting tomorrow here at 1 p.m. Uh, on your newsletter, you'll see that we're having another morning tea on the 6th of September, Wednesday the 6th at Mermaids. We all love our morning teas, and of course we thank Aileen and Frank for that and pulling us together. So this is a special time where you'll just have a little bit of time, extra time, to talk to Joe and Lozana and, and get to know them a little bit better. So if you would please let Aileen know that you're coming, because she does have to book the number of seats at the um, cafe. A little notice that's not in our newsletter, and I should have put it in, is that on the 23rd of September, Caboolture Uniting Church is having a garage sale. So if you have any items that you would like to move on, you can let Doug or I know. Buy more stuff. Well, it always comes in. But um, it's one of their fundraisers and community activities. So I'll put it in for next week's newsletter. Okay, now it's time we prepare our hearts and our minds to receive God's word. So our call to worship. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Our help is in the name of the Lord 
who made heaven and earth. And so we gather here to worship. And I invite you to stand as we sing together. We will enter his gates with thanksgiving in our hearts. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Oh, don't sing it three times, but <laughs> Oliver and Hansy, oh man, are they into it. Line dancing or, or whatever. That was great. Please be seated. During the week, you would have seen on the news those terrible floods that took place in California. Rivers were flowing that had had not a drop of water in them for 50 years. Stuff was just being, you know, washed away. And of course, on the same day, they had an earthquake. I refer to that because we're going to say responsively Psalm 124, and that alludes to where did their strength come from? Their strength, just like in the psalm, has to come from the Lord. Thank you, Alan and Jenny. If the Lord had not been on our side, let Israel say, if the Lord had not been on our side when people attacked us, they would have swallowed us alive with their anger flared against us. The flood would have engulfed us. The torrent would have swept over us. The raging waters would have swept us away. Praise be to the Lord who has not let us be torn by their teeth. We have escaped like a bird from the fowler's snare. The snare has been broken, and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Our help is in the name of the Lord, and I invite you to stand and sing the beautiful Chris Tomlin song, Whom Shall I Fear? Please stand. <laughs> Yeah. 
time for a children's story. That is a child here, but there I'm sure are children elsewhere as well. And let's face it, we're all kids at heart. In the Bible reading we have shortly, Jesus tells Peter and the other disciples, I will give you the keys of the kingdom and whatever binds you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whoa. So what we do each day we are Jesus' witness to whatever Jesus is offering us in heaven. Well, what about these keys? Well, for a start, let's have a look at these. Some of us have got sets like this. And do you know what? I find them a pain in the neck. Because not only are they heavy around your neck, but there's so many keys. Every door around here has a different key. And do you know some of them are numbered? But if the light's not real good or your eyes are playing up and your glasses aren't working, is that C4 which gets you into here or C6 gets you into the toilet? You know, so there's, there is a little bit of a difference as to, as to where you can go with them. And the other thing is that we're not allowed to lose them. I didn't, but Doug had to sign for them, that we will treasure these keys. So, yeah, I guess that's some sort of honour. I'm not too sure. But recently, last week, you would have seen on TV that the Matildas were given the keys of what? The, the keys of the city. And I was wondering, where did this... That is the key that they got... Where did this idea come from? Well, it came back from the really, really olden days. You can say medieval, but really you can go back to... Think of Jerusalem and its, its entrances as well. Because back then, they didn't have keys like this, but there was big wooden doors. We've seen big Roman doors with keys this long going into some of the cathedrals. They're amazing, but they were so important. Because every day, doors were opened. So that what could happen, Ollie? Uh, I don't know. Well, people could. Walk through them. They could walk through them. They walked like out. Like everyone here did today. That's right. They walked out to their fields. People came in at night for protection. In the 
the uh, traders could walk in to do their business of the day, but if the enemy was approaching, which happened many, many times in, through the course of history, people were quickly brought inside, the key was turned, and hopefully they were safe. So the person that had the key was either the king or his most trusted person. It was a great honour to hold the key. So we honoured the Matildas for what they did in the field of sport, and that is the greatest honour that a city can confer. The trick is, though, that key actually opens nothing. nothing. Exactly, it opens nothing. So it's a little bit different to the key we're going to hear about from Joe later. Other people, many other people, I think there's 42, have received the keys to the city of Brisbane. And there was one which was a bit controversial in its day, was Stephen Bradbury. Um, I picked him because I loved his story. I mean, that was the only way I could have ever earned a medal. If everyone else fell down around me, it's what happened to him, but he got the gold medal. But then this week, he's being given a medal of bravery for saving some girls who were being washed away up at Caloundra. So Stephen, he has one of these keys. The Brisbane Bullets that you still yeah, see on TV, they all have, well, the, the year they, they won, they've all got the key. So the key that Jesus offered his disciples was the honour. Just like we said, the king bestowed an honour. The honour to preach and they could heal and they could help others. But they can only do it in one name. The name of Jesus. And this is the key that will open doors for eternal life. And this is what we're going to hear a little bit more about later on. So being part of the Christian family, this is a great honour indeed. So let's pray. Thank you, Jesus, Jesus, for showing us the way to eternal life and for trusting us to try and speak and act like you every day. Amen. So now it's in our time to come before God with our prayers of confession. There is a small part towards the end where you have time for private confession. God saves us despite us being unworthy of salvation. In response to that grace, let us confer, confess ways that we have fallen short. Father God, we have often been swallowed up by our greed and selfishness, desiring that which we do not have, filling our lives with things that do not save us. We have often been swept away by the floods of our own making, polluting your creation, neglecting to be faithful stewards of the earth. We have often attacked one another and lived lives of violence sending missiles instead of accepting refugees, ignoring your commandments. Lord, have mercy, for all of us have sinned. Christ, have mercy, for all of us are broken and need your salvation. Hear us, Lord, as each of us brings to you our time of private confession. So may our desire be to serve you always. Amen. God is the giver of many gifts. So hear the assurance. He's the creator of one body. God is slow to anger and quick to forgive. God helps us to share and honour the gifts of all. God helps us to heal and reunite the body. And so I can declare to you, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. 
be to God. We're also loved and accepted. And on that premise, I invite you to remain seated as we sing, This is my desire, I give you my heart. No, no, that was lovely. Thank you, Sue. Karen, would you like to bring us the Bible reading? Well, it goes through twelve. All right, uh, today's Bible reading is from uh, Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 to 20. Uh, Peter declares that Jesus is the Messiah. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that God is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he ordered his uh, disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. This is the word of the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your words, and we ask a blessing on Joe as he brings the message today. May it touch our hearts and be an encouragement to the congregation. Amen. Amen. Uh, very good morning to you all. Thank you for the singing. Uh, please uh, relax and just sing, and uh, thank you for your prayers. Let's pray. Grace God, we thank you for our worship service today. Come and be with us. Help me to share the words you revealed to me, and not to be proclaimed. And uh, we ask you, Holy God, to take the bed out of me as I'm about to preach a holy word. Give us an understanding heart and help us to be what you want us to be. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hi. An old city located in a Gentile country. 
40 kilometers north of the Sea of Galilee, under the foothills of Mount Hermon. The pagan people of this region worship many different gods. They also they worship Baal and the god Pan. Our Bible reading today continues from our last week Bible reading. Last week, Bible reading was about Jesus and a Canaanite woman. After, meeting, after that meeting, Jesus and his disciples went north to Caesarea, Philippi. And our Bible reading in verse 13 mentions that Jesus and his disciples were, while were in the region of Caesarea, Philippi, asked them, who do people say? the Son of God is. Jesus wants to know how would his disciples answer that his question. The disciples answered, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others Jeremiah, and others say the prof one of the prophets. Jesus did not make a comment. He could see that the people differ in their thinking about him. With those names that the disciples mentioned, it clearly shows us that the people were thinking of Jesus as a prophet while working in the secular world. We had a survey association meeting conference in the mid 1990s. The chairperson of that time, in his opening speech, talked about his faith. He said that the, the Jewish faith that he belonged to, they see Jesus as a prophet, ranked number eight of all the prophets in the Bible. Aside, one of my friends asked me, what do you think? I'm, I said, I, I'm, I'm happy. That they, he recognized, they recognized Jesus. But Jesus is not a prophet. He's a son of God. It was the prophets who prophesied about him. About his coming and he's the son of God. The promised one. Some people thought of Jesus as John the Baptist. John the Baptist was a very popular figure. And he was very active before Jesus began his ministry. In Mark chapter 1 mentions that the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to see John the Baptist. John the Baptist was a great preacher. And he preached on the Baptist, uh, on, on the Baptism of repentance and the forgiveness of sins. He told the people to repent from their sins, and John confronted King Herod about his loose morality. He was imprisoned and finally put to death. Others say Elijah. The prophet Elijah was a great man of prayer. He prayed and asked God for rain, and it rained. And he prayed and asked God for the rain to stop, and the rain stopped. Elijah prayed that God would send fire from heaven to burn the water-soaked firewood, and the fire came and burned the wet firewood. Other mentioned Jeremiah. In Jeremiah's long ministry, he warned God's chosen people about the disaster that would fall on them because of their worshiping of idols and of their disobedience to God's commandments. He witnessed the destruction of the city of Jerusalem. He witnessed the destruction of the temple of Jerusalem by the king of Babylon. And he also saw the people 
been taken away, been taken away to Babylon in captivity. He also foretold the eventual return of the people from Babylon and the restoration of the Jewish nation. The disciples were silent. It was Elijah and Moses that appeared with Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. Peter, James, and John were on that mountain of transfiguration with Jesus. So the three of them knew that Jesus was not Elijah. John the Baptist was while in prison, heard the good news that what Jesus was doing. So he sent his disciples to ask Jesus, are you the one that is to come? Or should we wait for another? And Jesus answered, go and tell John what you have heard and seen. Peter and other disciples must have heard Jesus reply to John. So the disciples knew that Jesus was not God, uh, John the Baptist. John the Baptist, Elijah, Jeremiah, and all the people were dead people. Jesus was there, alive, with the disciples. The disciples were perhaps were searching through their mind of the best answer. Perhaps they were thinking, you are the one that called us to be your disciples. You are the one who gave us the Sermon on the Mount, and you told us that we are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Perhaps the disciples were thinking, you gave us a new teaching of love, to love God, to love our enemies, and to pray for those who persecute us. You heal the sick, the lame, the demon possessed among the people. You heal men with leprosy, the blind and the deaf. We cried out to you, Lord, save us. You are going to drown, and you calmed the storm. You brought to life a dead girl, and you taught us the parables, taught us through the parables, the parables, the parables of the sower, the parable of the mustard seed and the yeast. You fed the 5,000 and you walked on water. Then Jesus asked his second and important question. He asked the disciples for personal response. He asked, but what about you? Who do you say I am? Jesus asked them the question, that question. You and I must also answer that question. And Simon Peter broke the silence. He served as a spokesperson for the rest of the disciples. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. This, profession, this confession is a great step in faith. Peter confessed, you are the Christ, the one whom we've been waiting for for centuries to come. You are the promised one. You are the son of God. Therefore, you also, you are also God. It is fitting that Jesus asked the disciples about himself in this pagan country. Here on this pagan country, Jesus was affirmed by Peter that Jesus is truly the son of the living God, not as compared to the dead pagan gods, Baal and Pan. And in the years to come, Jesus' name will be preached and worshipped in that pagan land. Paul, in his letter, in 1 Timothy chapter 6, when referring to Jesus, he said, you are the Lord of Lords, the Kings of Kings, the Anointed One. Peter saying to Jesus, you are the Son of the Living God. It's a truthful 
in a very important confession. And Jesus responded to Peter's confession, saying, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed by men, but my Father in heaven. Jesus first blessed Peter for the revelation, and he added, the revelation came from God the Father. God had given Peter what to say. Jesus identified Jonah as the, uh, Peter as the son of Jonah. That is to say, you are the son of a human being. Another comparison. May I ask, what about you and me? What would we say when asked, who is Jesus Christ in our lives, in our lives today? Or if Jesus himself asks you and me, who do you say I am? Are we bold enough to proclaim, to confess that Jesus is our Redeemer, our Savior, our Shepherd? Jesus is well known throughout the world, but seldom recognized. We know that very well here in Australia. People say, I do not believe in God. But they take Christmas holidays, Easter holidays off. I say to them, Why don't, if you don't believe in God, go and work. Don't take Christmas day off or Easter holidays off. There is a difference between knowing Jesus and believing in him. During that same conference that I talked about, we were about to have dinner. Our few friends were just sitting together in the table. And I say gently to them, I'm going to, to ask God to bless my food. Do you want me also to ask God to bless all our foods? The reply came. One of the boys say, I do not want to hear about God. Or hear about Jesus. But I say, well, I'll just pray for my food for myself. I went on suddenly, pray for my food. In Matthew chapter 27, verse 54, at the foot of the cross, the pagan centurion, and those with him, when they saw the earthquake, and all that was happening, he declared, surely he is the son of God. If we do not stand for something, it is possible we will fall for anything. One of the greatest dangers of the church today is with that we tend to forget Jesus, who is Jesus is, and what he came on earth to achieve. We tend to create a Jesus in our own image, a Jesus that agree with us in our own ideas and in our own ways, ways of life. As we get to know Jesus of the Bible more, we'll be challenged in all our ways of life. We, know it, we need to worship the Jesus that is revealed in the Bible. God still call us by name through Jesus. No matter where we are in our faith journey, God's presence, God's love, and God's forgiveness are all available to you and to me. Are we willing to make a confession like the centurion at the foot, at the foot of the cross of our belief of who Jesus is. Our confession makes the difference in our faith in Jesus and to those who reject him. And in Luke chapter 2, tell us an angel of the Lord appearing to the shepherds in the field, saying to them, Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you, is Christ the Lord. And in John chapter 11, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. 
And let us not forget Paul's words in Romans chapter 10 to quote that if you confess with our mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with the heart that you believe and are justified. And it is with the mouth that you confess and are saved. May the Holy Spirit help you and I to confess. Lord Jesus, I believe in you, the Son of the living God. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The next hymn we're going to sing, Alan said, oh, this one's even older than me. Well, seeing it was written in the 19th century, I could assure him that, yes, it was written quite a long while ago. And it's an old hymn, but the words in it, reflect on them and after Joe's sermon, and you'll find there is a fit between them. But if you'd like to remain seated until the offering has been taken up, and then we'll stand for the last part of the hymn. So let, let's sing. It starts off, hang on, straight away. Ready, and it's fight the good fight. Ready, Mr. Music. <laughs> we knew there was no introduction. Christ with all thy might. Christ is thy strength and Christ thy might. Let God, thank you for the privilege of partnering with you and each other in the ministry of our church. Bless our efforts and our contributions that we make for the building up of the church, both here and afar. Amen. Amen. And now as we come into time of prayers for others, again, there will be a space for you to pray your private prayers. Lord Jesus, you are a Lord who walks beside your people. So we pray for people who walk for justice. Perhaps in your prayers you can focus on youth crime and the families of those fam people who are parents to the kids offending those who have been affected. You are a Lord who raises up those who are bent low. So we pray for those held down by the grindings of life and the indifference of the world.
You are a Lord who feeds the hungry. So we pray for all those who long for bread and the means to provide it. So there's focus on Africa and you've got the destruction of the grain that's taking place in Ukraine. You are a Lord who celebrates the small and the insignificant. And so we pray for children and those that never seem to be noticed. Perhaps we can focus on kids in abusive situations and the oldies suffering elder abuse. You are a Lord who heals. Let's take time to give thanks for answered prayer. You are a Lord who says, follow me. So we pray for courage and faith in our hearts <clears throat> that we may take up the cross and find it leads to life. And so let us pray together the words that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Joe, I'll invite you for the benediction. benediction. Gracious God, we thank you for, for our worship service. The end is not yet. Friends in Christ, let us go on our way cheerfully, trusting in God, the Creator, to do the best that is possible for us all. Christ is near at hand. We are on our way, ready to encounter Christ in a stranger, in loved ones, enemy, and friend. Let us go boldly, knowing that the Spirit is our guide. Let us not be afraid. Let us go on our way, for there is nothing ahead that God has not anticipated and provided for. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all today, tomorrow and forevermore. Amen. And our final song says it all after listening to Joe. May the feet of God go with you. Let's stand and sing. Of course we need to stand.
And as we go out for morning tea, I invite you this week to pray for Melissa and Hansie and Ollie because we believe that this is the week when their little baby girl will be born. But also at the end of the week, Michelle's Mariana will be having her little baby, Ella. So come prepared for great news next Amen. Sunday. Amen. Now morning tea. Now morning tea.